This is the most powerful second brain system in Obsidian you can find online. And the best part is, it's completely free. It covers a fully automated task management system inspired by David Allen's getting things done method to optimize your workflow and Tiago Forte's Paris system to keep your projects, areas, resources and archive organized. In addition, there's a built-in calendar for scheduling future appointments, maps of content to navigate your notes with ease and key community plugins to ensure a smooth second brain experience. You can even capture thoughts throughout the day that aren't designed to any project. I'll walk you through every feature so by the end of this video you'll have a clear understanding of how to use this powerful tool to take control of your productivity and knowledge organization like never before. When we create a project there are several ways to do it. We can simply add the project tag to any note and it will transform it into a project. However, the quickest method is to use a hotkey and a template. By pressing Command plus T, I can select my project template and just like that I've created a new project in a fresh node. Hotkeys can be changed in the settings. Any tasks you add to the project will automatically appear on your master task list. This list is powered by a custom JavaScript code, which integrates valuable elements of the getting things done methodology. Now what exactly is getting things done? It's a productivity system by David Allen that breaks down tasks into manageable next actions, organizing them by context, priority and deadlines. This helps ensure that nothing is overlooked, freeing up mental space for other things. This entire process is automated, so tasks created anywhere in the vault are automatically presented in the master task list. The tasks are categorized and their associated projects are shown as well. Once a task is completed, the system automatically presents the next one, ensuring a smooth workflow. The master task list is divided into helpful sections to keep things organized. Projects without next actions is a section that will flag any projects which don't have tasks assigned yet. If you create a new project but forget to add tasks, it will show up here, reminding you to add actions. The next section shows tasks or even entire projects that you've marked as high priority with this specific emoji. You might use this for urgent tasks that need your immediate attention. Waiting on tracks tasks that are on hold, waiting for someone else to take action. There is a tasks menu template which you can assign to a hotkey and quickly use. The default hotkey is Alt plus T. You can then create a waiting on task, perfect for keeping things organized when you in the middle of a project. More on the task menu template later in this video. In do next you'll find all actionable tasks that aren't marked as priority, ready for you to work on next. Someday is a list for ideas or tasks that you might want to tackle later but aren't ready to work on right now. Tag them with someday to keep them out of your more important task sections. Additionally, you can archive completed tasks by using the same Alt plus T hotkey. They will automatically move to the completed tasks page when you demand it through the menu. There are also tasks that aren't designed to any specific projects. I like to use this section to capture thoughts and ideas that pop up throughout the day. This note is flexible and dynamic, allowing you to later assign tasks to existing projects, or even create a new project inspired by a particular task. To keep your master task list clean, you can exclude tasks. If you want to wipe out all tasks from a specific note, simply add the tag exclude master task list anywhere within that note and all the tasks within it won't show up in the master task list. This also occurs when tasks are listed under the heading calendar. This heading is part of the calendar template. When you create a new note by selecting a date on the calendar and for example enter future appointments as tasks, those entries will not appear in the master task list. It makes sense to exclude future appointments from the master task list since they aren't actionable at the moment. You can easily track your appointments through the small dots on the calendar which indicate any upcoming events for each day as well as the word count for each calendar note. This feature can be customized in the calendar settings. Another way to exclude tasks is by adding the exclude tag directly on a heading. This ensures that any tasks listed under that heading are also excluded from your master task list, helping you maintain an organized system. There is a list of all your projects in the project list page. It's a basic data view query, so you can customize it however you like. If you don't want the tasks inside a project to be sequential, you can include the equal sign emoji anywhere in the heading for that section and the tasks will be treated as if they are to be done in parallel. Now let's have a better look at the para system. It's a system for organizing your digital life into four categories. Projects with tasks which we already looked at, areas that are ongoing responsibilities like health or finances, resources in which are implemented maps of content that allows you to organize your notes through linking rather than folders, and archive where you can store your inactive or finished projects and tasks. These four categories are in separate lists. I've made sure that there are backlinks almost everywhere, allowing you to easily navigate back to the master task list at any time. Of course you can always hit command plus O to search for and jump between notes seamlessly. If you take a closer look, 
each project has an area and a resource property. This allows you to link your project to a specific area and resource. However, our second brain system is flexible, so your project doesn't always need to be tied to an area. In the areas list, you'll find the data view query that displays all your areas. Clicking on an area brings up another query showing all the projects linked to that specific area. When you finish a project, you can check the completed property which will remove the project from both the master task list and project list. Unlike automated task archiving, we can only manually move completed projects to the archived projects folder in this vault. Now let's have a look at our resources. Instead of using traditional folders, I've implemented the maps of content concept, short mock. Each mock represents a specific topic of interest. When we click on this one, we can find that I've already did some literature notes on two articles I've come across online. You can easily add backlinks to your mock page and your resource homepage, allowing you to jump quickly between resources and keep your thought process fluid. There's also a folder containing an overview of key people involved in your task management, such as work colleagues. You can easily create a new entry using the person template. By clicking the template button in the left sidebar, you can add a person to a specific task and that task will automatically be linked to the person's database to keep everything inside. As mentioned at the start of the video, the automated task processing is powered by a JavaScript code running in the background. If you change certain titles, like this one for example, then additional unwanted changes may occur, which would require adjustments in the task's JavaScript code to undo unwanted alterations. By the way, there's a link in the description to the GitHub repo of the mastermind that wrote this code, perhaps you will find more information there. While all the settings should be pre-configured when you download the vault, if you just want to integrate some features of this vault into your own, there are a few considerations to keep in mind. So as you can see, everything is stored locally on the computer, including all nodes as markdown files. The tasks menu template should be stored in the templates folder. The two templater user scripts should be in the templater scripts folder. The other scripts are in the data view scripts folder. Lastly, verify that your community plugin settings are correct. Let's start with the templater plugin. The template folder location is set to templates. The script files folder location is set to templater. The data view plugin should look somehow like this and I've also added a banner on my master task list node to motivate myself but you can of course change the banner if you want. There are a few additional settings worth mentioning. If you head over to the editor settings you'll find more customization options to explore. Personally I prefer hiding the properties to keep my notes clean. When I need to view them I can simply open the options menu in the top right corner of a note and move the properties to the right sidebar. While it's exciting to watch the graph grow as new nodes are continuously added, I usually delete nodes after a while when they're not relevant anymore, like my calendar nodes used for appointments. Once their purpose is served, I clear them out to keep my vault organized. Lastly, I selected the 80s neon theme that you can of course change in the appearance settings if you want. The link to download this vault is in the description below. You might as well check out this video about Logseek which is very similar to Obsidian but open source and see you in the next video. Bye.